Well, welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Central Valley Church of Christ Digital Edition. We uh, doing something a little bit different today, and uh, we're grateful that you're with us. We're going to be working on this a lot through the next uh, few weeks to make this better every time, and uh, appreciate your patience. And um, well, let me tell you a little more about what we're going to be doing today. Back in Fresno. Trip got cut short a little bit. World pandemic. I think we can look at something like this and go, well, what's God trying to do? And that's good, I think, in some ways. Our theme for the year is vision. And we want to think what is he seeing and see what he's seeing. Um, but then I think we need to see things through his eyes. And sometimes that can be hard. Uh, why would he do something like this? You could do the big picture, like God wants to humble us a little bit by using something microscopic to bring our great species to its knees. Or it could be something as simple as, you know, this is the nature of life. And uh, we really shouldn't be surprised that these things happen. But uh, any way we look at it, I think we need to <clears throat> try to have a godly perspective on it, that God's not afraid. In uh, Acts 8, in verse 3, a great persecution breaks out in the church. And it says that Paul began to g destroy the church, it says, putting both men and women going from house to house, putting them in prison. Just imagine if that were to happen. What? Ha why? These are good people. These are the right people. These are the good people, right? Then verse 4 says, those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. And the Great Commission says to go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But these guys weren't doing that. They were still in Jerusalem. So... I don't know if he had that persecution occur, but he definitely used it to get the word out there because they preached the word wherever we, they went. So I think we have to use this opportunity to preach the word wherever we go, to love each other, love your neighbor. Connect up as much as we can. So this sermon that I uh, brought, filmed was filmed in Israel, and it's called Visions of the Holy Land, it's kind of my visions, but uh, also just uh, the things that God's done through there. And it's in three p three uh, three points, and you know, it's before this whole corona thing started, so it's really got nothing to do with that at all. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can uh, uh, get something from a message that's not specifically about that, but to uh, see you know, what, what God's done uh, over the time and is still doing. So uh, we'll start that right now. Thanks. It's always a good idea to start off with a prayer. Well, God, thanks for bringing us together in this uh, unique way. And, you know, maybe one of the things you're trying to do is to get us to to scatter, even to learn more how to reach out to people digitally, uh, to stay connected in such a, a new way that we're not used to. But uh, God, I pray um, that we can be connected and that we'll be uh, faithful. God, I also pray that, uh, you know, we'll be, we'll, we'll see uh, a bigger vision in things than just how this is affecting our daily lives or what we can or can't do, but to uh, really see what, what you want and what you are trying to do in our lives. So thanks for this time. We love you, and it's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
Right now, I'm at the church in Tel Aviv, and they have something that they want to say. Hello, Israel. Today, we went from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea and through the desert. The title of the first point is to find your desert. Open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. I've often wondered why God chose a place with so much desert to be the Holy Land. Maybe because it's so different than the Garden of Eden. Maybe it's uh, because we need it. God uses the desert a lot and, uh, as times of transition, as times of challenge, like when the Israelites had to go through the desert after leaving Egypt to get to the promised land. John the Baptist came out of the desert to preach about the Messiah coming, and Jesus was sent into the desert after he got baptized. And so many times I, I run away from the challenging times in my life. They seem scary and hard, and like you're never going to get through them. I think when the Israelites saw this behind me, I think they were scared. And they lost faith. They made up excuses, they made up lies, and they eventually even rebelled against God. Jesus, though, different story. In Matthew 4, verse 10, after he's tempted by Satan, he says, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. Jesus was not only able to get through the desert, he had an incredible victory over Satan himself. And, and I think that this prepared Jesus for the, uh, the, the incredibly challenging ministry he was going to have and, and, and uh, the horrific death that he was going to go through. Like I said, I, I want to run away from my challenges a lot, but uh, I think I want to embrace them more in the future and see what God is trying to to do in me instead of running away from what he's trying to do. Right now, I'm at the palace of Masada, the fortress palace of Masada that King Herod made. After the fall of the Roman Empire, uh, the Byzantine monks would come here to get away from society. The mistake they made is that they stayed in the desert. God doesn't want you to stay in your desert. He wants you to find it, but he wants you to go through it. And with faith and with God's word and following Jesus, you can follow his example and not only get through that desert, but be victorious. Amen. In 1 Samuel 
24, it says that David was to be the new king. But the old king didn't like that. So he chased him out here into the desert. David had to have his time in the desert, even though he killed Goliath, even though he was appointed king. He needed it. God knew he needed it, but he didn't leave him alone. He gave him this incredible place called En Gedi. Lots of awesome places to hide, cool places to get shelter. But Saul hunts him down and gets him in a cave. And he says in Psalm 57, have mercy on me, O Lord. Have mercy. I will take shelter in the shadow of your wings. He's scared, but he's faithful. And he praises God and says in verse 9, I will praise you, O Lord, to the nations. I will sing your praises to the people. For great is your love, reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. And there's waterfalls all over here. And we're on our way to the one famously called David's Waterfall. Pretty cool. We're coming up to David's Waterfall. It's incredible to think that David himself drank out of this waterfall. One of the crazy things about this is how did all this water get in the middle of the desert? Well, I read about that. And it's Basically, that God moved the mountain to make it happen. There used to be mountains here, and this used to be lush, but the mountains moved close to the Mediterranean Sea. But what didn't move was the underground aqueducts. So even though those mountains are miles on the coast, the water still flows to here. So no matter what desert you're in, God can move a mountain to make the water come for you. See that cool cave right there? Check that thing out. One thing about En Gedi, where God had David hide, was that it's just so beautiful. The water, the streams. God could have just given him a hole in the ground and some water coming out of a rock. But well, look at this place. Waterfalls, and then you go through here and you sprinkle water and woo. Tell me this isn't a cool cave. I think it's even got a bird. God is awesome. So yes, the desert can have its challenges. Last night it was so windy that I found out uh, buying a cheap tent is not a great way to save money. I literally threw it out, slept in the car. Coming, driving back, I was just exhausted. 
Then I come to pick up the motorcycle I reserved and he rented it to somebody else. But God has a way of providing water even in a desert. So, he said he'll be having it tomorrow. He's gonna give me a big discount, which is kind of what I wanted to do anyway. Went online and found this great room for $63. Oh, watch out for that pole. And it's right across the street from the beach. So I know where I'm going to have my quiet time tomorrow. And when I came in the door, I was just really encouraged. It's just a cool little place. Clean, kitchen. Not that I'll be using the TV. But it also had this, that kind of just caught my heart here. It says, life is a journey. Do what you love, love what you do. And live your life like a butterfly. Take a rest sometimes, but never forget to fly. And finally, the most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. So, God doesn't want you to stay in the desert. He wants you to get through it. And he wants you to be happy where you're at. Those aren't scriptures right there, but I could find scriptures that are pretty close. So the second point of our lesson is going to be find your kingdom. The first point was find your desert. The second part's going to be find your kingdom, and we're going to be going up through Nazareth to Capernaum and the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus preached about finding the kingdom is like finding a great treasure. So let's do this. So I've got some jackals in my campsite and uh, they're pretty close. Like I can see them walking around and stuff. And when I think jackals, mostly I just think Lion King. Mean, ugly, but a good sense of humor and they turn out good in the end. So I feel like I'm just gonna be faithful. Maybe I'll just tell him to be quiet. Thank you. So I'm on the bus to Nazareth and they say get off at Armageddon to get the transfer. And this is where it drops me. I should have known there would be a problem when I heard the name of the bus stop. So, I've just arrived in uh, Nazareth. And it's, um, you know, pretty interesting here. Why don't you open up your Bibles to John chapter 1 in uh, verse 46. When uh, Philip met Jesus, he was really excited. And he wanted to uh, let Nathaniel know. So he goes and uh, he says, I found the Messiah. He's from Nazareth. And in verse 46, Nathaniel's like, Nazareth? What good can come from there? And see, for me now, like, that scripture's coming, coming more alive to me. But then Philip says, come see. And that's what we're going to do. So the first point was to find your desert. And I think... 
we can go through our desert and then we have to go and try to find our place in the kingdom. And I think we can be discouraged, oh, it doesn't look like this or look like that. But I think you just need to find your place. In John 14, 1, Jesus says, I've got many rooms I'm preparing for you in heaven. Well, why wouldn't he do that here? I think in here in the kingdom, many rooms, they're not all the same. Not all the rooms are the same in heaven. They're not all the same here. And just like in this room we're staying here, there are many rooms. They're not all the same. Look, the Jesus trail starts here. It's going to be hiking that. There's all kinds of rooms. There's the garden room. Pretty nice. Oops, more birds. And then the room up here. All oh, these rooms. No. Oops, watch out for the wall. They're all a little different. Maybe not all fancy. Maybe there's a little bit of, whoa, ceiling repair that needs to be done. I think all the rooms in the kingdom are creative. They don't all need to look a certain way. Maybe your kitchen doesn't look like this. But maybe your power looks like this. See where you can just lounge around and find your own spot. This is my room here. How's it going? Hello. Say hello, Fresno. Hello, hello, Fresno. Lovely to see you and <laughs> hope you have a lovely day, everyone. There you go. See that? People are nice here. So this next part is about some people that found an interesting place in the kingdom for themselves. These guys are the Knights Templar. And this tunnel here was something that they built to uh, get through from the port to the fort, basically. Pretty rough neighborhood when you have to build a tunnel to avoid it. What these guys were was they were basically militarized monks, like serious monks, but serious skills. And what they did, one of their main functions, was to provide safe passage for people like myself that wanted to come to the Holy Land, but they couldn't because uh, it was that dangerous. You never know what your place in the kingdom is going to be. Maybe you're a Knight Templar in some way. This is where the tunnel comes out at the Crusader Citadel, which also has a uh, nice little cafe, which looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna head over there and enjoy my right to be a tourist of the Holy Land. So I just wanna say thanks to the Knights for finding your place in the kingdom. would give me some kind of sign on this trip as to what I should do with my life. Something obvious like I gave Daniel. Just haven't seen anything yet. Here we are. Between uh, Gethsemane down there and uh, the Mount of Olives and Bethsaida over there. And uh, it's one of my favorite spots. I just 
reading the Bible because um, it's where Jesus went to get away from everything. I think he could just be himself here. And, uh, and God moved here in many different ways. I think one of the ways was to help him to uh, have the spiritual batteries to do what he needed to do uh, for whatever challenge he had. But I want to wrap up uh, the lesson here. As you know by now, it's going to be an abbreviated lesson. But the first point was to find your desert, to find the place where you need to go so that you can really deal with those things in yourself that you need to deal with so you can be your best spiritually, uh, like, like Jesus did when he uh, was sent to the desert for the 40 days. Uh, the second point is to find your kingdom, to find your place in the kingdom, wherever that is, to make it great. Be happy where you're at. God doesn't make mistakes. He didn't make a mistake when he made you. He didn't have a, oh, I don't have no place for the kingdom and for them. That's not true. That's Satan lying to you, which is his job. But we need to actively find our place or we might be trying to be in someone else's place or in the wrong place and maybe even blaming others. The third point is to find your father. Like uh, when uh, Nathaniel says, Nazareth, what good could come from there? Jesus didn't say, why are you disrespecting my hometown? Because he knew it was true. It was kind of a dump. And that's not his hometown. In Luke 2, 49, when his parents find him as, a, as an adolescent, Jesus is like, why are you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house, right? Why are you looking for me? I'm home. I don't need to be found. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Not Nazareth, but here on the Temple Mount. And at that time, it was true. That was God's house. That was his holy place. He did reside there. Jesus was able to find where his father really was. And here at Gethsemane, he had to really work on his relationship with his dad, right? <clears throat> To find where his father in that way and I think we all need to do that through challenging times I don't think anyone gets away without a desert or without a hard time finding their place in the kingdom or without a hard time finding their spiritual father and I think sometimes we can get bitter like why is this so hard instead of going you know this is hard it must really be worth something so I want you to encourage you to find your desert find your kingdom and find your father, and I'll see you back in Fresno. So that wraps it up. Find your desert, find your kingdom, find your father. Here I am back in Fresno, and uh, it's good to be home. Things are a little crazy, but I'm grateful to be with my family and uh, to be with you guys as much as I can. As we get ready for communion, uh, I just want to think of John 17, 20, where he says, My prayer is not for them alone, but for those who will come after me, that uh, we may be one, uh, that they may be one as we are one, where he was talking about him and his father. Um, I and them and you and me. And so he wanted, Jesus had a vision, not just to get through the desert, not just to find the kingdom, not just to find his father, but his vision was that uh, we could all be together someday. And that's why he gave his life, that we would be as unified with uh, him as he is with his father. So uh, as we wrap up, let's uh, get together and pray for communion. Well, God, uh, thank you so much that we can uh, meet together digitally like this. And Lord, we pray to uh, have a vision that you had that we could uh, be close to you even as close as your son is to you so uh, so grateful that your uh, son gave his life so that we could have an opportunity to have our sins forgiven and to um, be able to have a relationship with you so God we love you we thank you and it's in your son's name we pray amen so uh, as we pass the trays we're going to uh, have another song and then we'll be closed out for today. Thank you.